act has received zero attention. Jim Cooper, Tennessee, voted for Colin Powell. Representative Gwen Graham of Florida. Representative Dan Lipinski of Illinois. Representative Kirsten Sanima of Arizona. They didn't vote for Pelosi. I don't know if they've been punished or not. I don't know if they're kooks or nutjobs or leftists or left-wingers who should be drummed out of the party. I'm only going to spend the first couple of segments on this because it is what it is. You know the rot now that has really taken over the core of the Republican Party that's infested it. And the uh, fact that we need a new, invigorated, principled Republican Party that can address the issues and the problems that we face today, this one can't. It's led by these old bulls who care about their own power and only their own power. They don't give a damn if Obama's usurping the Constitution. I can't shut down the government. Ben, but we can throw members off committees if they dare to vote against us. Screw their constituents. And remarkably today, this morning, the Daily Caller has a piece by Neil Monroe. Good man. Listen to this one. And this didn't move but 25 Republicans in the House. Let me ask you if it would have moved you. Republican aides say House Speaker John Boehner was elated after he worked with Obama to push through the amnesty funding 2015 budget in December according to a profile in Politico. Now, we all know Politico is where the rhinos go and the Democrats go to get their message out. 67 GOP members voted against the budget, which funds Obama's effort to provide 5 million foreign migrants with work permits despite the historically low percentage of Americans who are working in the Obama economy. And the budget deal split the GOP caucus, repudiated its November voters, and rewarded Wall Street donors, writes Monroe. Obama personally called Boehner to say thanks. This is a quote. Boehner was elated over the deal and offered praise for White House Chief of Staff Dennis McDonough, said the fawning profile, which hides the deep ideological split between the GOP's anti-establishment and corporatist wings. I love the way the corporatist, a word that I've now introduced in the political vernacular, didn't invent it, but brought life back to it, is being used correctly. The article affirms in Politico the recent admission by a top Obama aide, Dan Pfeiffer, that Obama endorsed the budget deal, despite the inclusion of a big favor to Wall Street, because, quote, you have a funding bill that you know Congress passes that doesn't do anything to Obamacare and does nothing to immigration executive action. So the Republicans in the House fall all over themselves, even the so-called conservatives, but for 25 of them. And they give this man another term as speaker deceive and dissemble all through the election cycle, all through the town hall meetings, all through the grocery stores, the bus stops, the train stops, the handshaking, the door knocking, lie after lie after lie. Lie after lie after lie. This is why I despise rhinos even more than liberals, although they're much the same, aren't they? Politico's article was published the evening before Boehner will ask his 247-member caucus to re-elect him as Speaker. December's backroom budget deal was vital for Obama, partly because it bypassed the hostile public opinion that had blocked his plans for a 2014 rewrite of the nation's immigration law. So Boehner and McConnell and Obama worked behind the scenes for all the talk about dysfunction For all the talk about we've never seen a divided Congress like this before, or divided White House like uh, in Congress like this before. Bullcrap! Obama was whipping the votes in the House for Boehner. Boehner was whipping the votes in the House for Obama. McConnell was pushing behind the scenes with Reid. And all to avoid the incoming Republican majority in the Senate. And the damn fool freshman Republicans who were elected in the House voted for Boehner who has to be laughing, chug-a-lugging as he laughs all the way, at what he just pulled off. You see, for a guy like Boehner, it's crucial that you're loyal to him, that he doesn't have to be loyal to you. Same with McConnell. You either kiss his ring or you kiss his butt, and that's the way it works. Is that the way you want it to work? Pretty amazing, isn't it? These people are considered the good people, the good Republicans. They get things done. They're working. Those of us who challenge this, 
the Mr. Smiths who go to Washington, the 25 members of the House who said no, trash, smeared, the reputations assassinated, dismissed, marginalized, thrown off committees because they won't go along with the program. Now, what's the program? Open borders, bankrupting the nation, hollowing out the military, destroying the currency. You know that program. They won't go along with the program. Moreover, they actually believe in the consent of the government. as consent of the government and representative government. What does that mean? Hearings in Congress before subcommittees and committees. Small bills, short bills, so they know what they're voting for. Not these massive bills with a thousand things thrown in. That's what they believe in. And for this, for this, they will be abused and bad mouth. And those of you who are fortunate enough to live in their districts, just so you know, John Boehner intends to punish them, which means punish you. He's trying to send a signal. You better not step out of line. All over TV, including on our favorite cable network, these 25 brave souls are being dismissed. Or worse, which is appalling. Absolutely appalling. And we also learned today that Jeb Bush has set up a political action committee. And he's got a huge head start on the rest of the field to raise money. Because older brother George W. told him, raise as much damn money as you can and freeze out the others. Freeze them out. And then you use that money like Romney did in the Republican primaries to beat the crap out of your opponents. And then, of course, in the general election, you talk about conciliation, comedy, not comedy, comedy. A positive message, you know. Except when you talk about conservatives. Then you need to act like a liberal. And talk like a liberal. Just to prove my point that I've said over the years that the U.S. Chamber of Crony Capitalism has bought and paid for these Republican Party members. Hear from Peter Hamby at CNN. This is today. Chamber of Commerce strategist Rob Engstrom is taking a leave of absence to volunteer for Jeb's PAC. They go in government, they go to the chamber, they go to lobbying institutions, they go back into government, then they go to Jeb's PAC. This is why they despise these 25 patriots who spoke up today. This is why they despise Mike Lee and Ted Cruz and so forth. And I know Rand Paul's staff gets very upset with me because I don't mention him. I'd like to mention him, but Rand Paul was a big McConnell guy. And Rand Paul ran all over the country endorsing one establishment candidate after another. What do you want me to say? I had great hopes. And hopefully he'll come on the program next week or two. Not so I can bully him or force him in a corner. We'll talk about things he wants to talk about. But I recognize those who actually stand out and stand up. There's a reason why Mike Lee is hated by Orrin Hatch and Robert Bennett, the man he defeated. And notice Mike Lee stands up and speaks up. But this guy Jason Chavitz, he was supposed to be the next great Mike Lee in Utah. Down the line with Boehner. Down the line. Yes. So there are a lot of lessons to learn from this. We the people. There's a lot to understand from this. That we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of people to talk to. A lot of people to educate. But we never give up. George Washington never gave up in eight and a half years. And he won very few battles during the Revolutionary War. It was a war of attrition. Until the final battle. With the help of the French. And finally the British were defeated in a major way. Yes, we call it Yorktown. So, I take hope in the fact that there are tens of millions of us who want their country back, who want their government back, that there are tens of millions of us who believe in the American heritage and are not going to cower or be bullied or threatened to go along to get along. Yes, I take inspiration in the fact that there are tens of millions of us who've had it with Obama and Boehner and McConnell, and we want a new Republican Party, a Republican Party that represents the interests of the people that believes in the Constitution and will fight for the Constitution, that believes in free market capitalism, not crony capitalism, not the corporatism that we get from the big donors in the U.S. Chamber of Crony Capitalism, and most of all that believes in individual sovereignty, our unalienable rights. When's the last time Mitch McConnell said any of this? When's the last time John Boehner said any of this? I saw him, watched very carefully, floor of the house who was doing what and I saw him give a speech. He said we need to demonstrate in essence that we can work together. 
There's cynics out there, I understand it, he said, but we have to demonstrate that. And he praised Nancy Pelosi, and before she handed him the gavel, she praised him. At the very same time, his henchmen were plotting to destroy the careers of the 25 who voted against him. John Boehner would just as soon make friends, political friends, political alliances, with the radical left as represented by Nancy Pelosi, who gave us Obamacare, among other things. Worked behind the scene for months throughout the summer and into the fall with Obama. He would just as soon work with them to advance their agenda than with the conservatives, the 25, who stood up. Now, if you have a member of Congress in your district who claims to be a conservative, I named a few, maybe I should name more. Well, then you need to ask them, what did you do on January 6th when push came to shove? If you didn't vote the right way, I don't want to hear from you anymore about how conservative you are, because you're not. A few more votes. A few more votes. And it would have gone to a second round. And by the way, as it is, because of these 25 Republican patriots in the House, it's been 100 years since a speaker was challenged in such a significant way, which is also being dismissed by the media. For some reason, the media loved John Boehner. Gee, I wonder why. I'll be right back. (laughs) 